Here we have a word problem involving percentages. For these problems, the best way to go about them is to change it word by word into a math equation. So 48 is 48. The word is means equals. 40 is 40. Percent always means divide by 100. Of means multiply. What or what number means x. 48 is 40% 40 of what? And then we just need to solve that for x. 40 divided by 100. Remember, anytime you're dividing by 100, that's the same as moving a decimal twice. So 40 becomes 0.40, or just 0.4. Forty eight equals 0.4 times x. To get x by itself, we need to get rid of that times 0.4. We need to divide by 0.4. So now we have to divide decimals. 48 divided by 0.4. Step one in division with decimals is always to get this to the end there. We need to move that decimal one place so that we had a whole number we're dividing by. So here we need to move that decimal one place there. And 48 becomes 480. 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 8 two times. 2 times 4 is 8. And don't forget that last zero there. So x is 120. That's our answer. 48 is 40% 40 of 120. Anytime that we're adding or subtracting fractions, the first thing we need to do is get a common denominator. So for numbers of 4 and 5, for our denominators, we can just multiply those together. 4 times 5 is 20. We'll use that as a common denominator. So, if you start with 1 fourth and you need to make it something over 20, you need to multiply by 5, and you need to do that top and bottom. So, 1 fourth turns into 5 over 20. Over here, to turn fifths into twentieths, you need to multiply by 4. 3 times 4 is 12. The 4 and the 3 stay what they are for now. Next, you need to change these mixed numbers into improper fractions. And the way to do that is to multiply 4 times that 20 on bottom, and then add that 5. 4 times 20 is 80, plus that 5 is 85. And the denominator stays the same. Same idea over here. We multiply the number in front times the denominator. 20 times 3 is 60. And then we add whatever was on top. 60 plus 12 is 72. And whatever was on bottom stays on bottom. Still have that minus in the middle. Now we have 85 twentieths minus 72 twentieths. To work that out, we just need to subtract. 85 minus 72, that'll be 13. Since we had a common over 20, we still have that. And that is our answer, 13 twentieths. On this problem, we are adding fractions. And if we're adding or subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator. The quickest way to get one is just to multiply your denominators. 5 times 2 is 10. I need to make everything into tenths. So to turn 3 fifths into tenths, I need to multiply by 2. 5 times 2 gives me the 10, and 3 times 2 gives me the new numerator of 6. To turn halves into tenths, we need to multiply by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 1 times 5 gives you 5. And then, before we can add these together, we want to turn them from the mixed numbers into improper fractions. So to do that, multiply the number in front times the denominator. 3 times 10 is 30. Add that 6, you get 36. Still over 10. Same process here. Number in front times the denominator plus the numerator. 2 times 10 is 20, plus that 5 is 25. We are still adding these two. That plus comes straight down. And then we have to add together the numerators. What is 36 plus 25? Well, when we're adding, remember 6 plus 5 is 11, and you carry the 1. Then 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So you get 61 tenths. And then you'll need to turn it back into a mixed number. 
And the way to do that is to divide. You take that 61 and you do the long division dividing it by 10. How many times does 10 go into 60? Goes in six times and has a remainder of one. So this is just six and a remainder of one remains over that 10. And that's your final answer, six and one tenth. Round 1,234 over 99 to the nearest integer. Well, the most straightforward way to do this is to just start the long division. 1, 2, 3, 4 divided by 99. 99 doesn't fit into 1 or into 12, but it does fit into 123. It'll fit in one time. 3 minus 9 doesn't work, so I have to borrow 1 from there. 13 minus 9 is 4, 11 minus 9 is 2, and this 4 comes straight down. Then how many times does 99 go into 244? Turns out it goes in twice. 99 times 2 ends up being 198. And if you don't know that, you can just work that out off to the side. 2 times 9 is 18, carry the 1. 2 times 9 is 18, add that 1 to get 19. And once we got that 198, we just subtract. So 4 minus 8 doesn't work, so we borrow from there. 14 minus 8, that gives us 6. 3 minus 9, 3 isn't big enough, so we have to borrow again. This 2 becomes a 1 and a 10. 13 minus 9, that is 4. 1 minus 1 cancels out completely. And now if we want to round to the nearest integer, we've got to go 1 past the unit place. So we've got to the integer place right now. But we need to keep going. So we put a zero there and drag it down. Then how many times does 99 go into 460? Well, 99 is almost 100, so it'll go in about four times. Turns out that 99 times 4 would be 396. It doesn't really matter what you get when you subtract there, because you've got what you need. 12.4 to round that to the nearest integer. We have 12.4. We want to round to the nearest spot right there. So it'll either stay at 12 or go up to 13. And we look at the next piece to see. The next number, the next digit, is a 4. That's small. If you're 4 smaller, you round down, you stay at 12. If this was 5 or 6 or 7, anything 5 or bigger, you would have rounded up to 13. But it was 4, it was small, you round down. Our answer is 12. So we have three numbers with a sum of eight. Let's call those numbers P, Q, and R. If they have a sum of eight, what does that mean? Well, sum means add. When you add all of these up, that equals eight. And then you have four numbers, P, Q, R, and now S, that have an average of eight. What does that mean? Well, to have an average, that means you add up everything you have and divide by how many there are. There's one, two, three, four things we're averaging and that has to be 8. So these are our two algebra equations and now I just need to find out what that fourth number, what that s is. Well, we know p plus q plus r has to be 8. So 8 replaces that whole piece of algebra there. Everything in that parentheses and we have 8 plus s divided by 4 equals 8. And from here, it's a pretty typical solve for your variable sort of problem. We've got 8 plus s divided by 4. The first thing we want to get rid of is get rid of this divide by 4, because it's affecting that whole side. The opposite of divide by 4 is multiply by 4. Multiply by 4 cancels out divide by 4. 8 plus s equals 8 times 4 is 32. So we have 8 plus s equals 32. In order to get s by itself, we've got to get rid of a positive 8. To get rid of a plus 8, we are going to subtract 8. 8 minus 8 cancels. Then we have the letter s equals 32 minus 8 is 24. And that is our answer.